is that boy. I trained him. At, uh, uh, Which boys? Tunde and uh, Tubaba and uh, Wumi. You, 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 you train them oh, all. Oh, yeah, they are yeah, my boys. Well done, well yeah, done. When they were small, they were, they were children. You know, After all, yeah. we're talking children. Especially today. now that we're talking children. Yes, so, those, those um, are your children. So they are will be happy Children's Day to you, um, both of you. And well done, your mentor is very proud of you. Mentor, yeah. mentor. <laughs> That's my partner for you. Children are God's bits of wood, as they say in Francophone West Africa. You don't count them for their parents. Just accept them as God's gift. And if you have a gift and you don't look after it, well, I would say that's a sin on its own. God has given you something unsolicited, a present of which you should be proud, so you should look after it. Mm. Yesterday was Children's Day, so we're going to be looking at a better future for the Nigerian child. All kinds of uh, laws, international laws, un Treaties, United Nations no. have been domesticated in Nigeria, and yet you still see the child in Nigeria with the rough end of the stick. You see them at a young age trading on the streets, risking their lives running between cars. You see them on farms. You see them everywhere but what, where they're supposed to be, which is when they're that age, they're supposed to be in school. So how do we plan to give the Nigerian child a better future? This and many more questions we're going to put to the PRO, Lagos Child Protection Council, Ali Mosho, Joy Itokudo. Thank you so much for having me, I'm really As well as a legal practitioner and an advocate, Safe for Children Society. Olabi C. Afolabi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Good you. morning, and yeah. thank you for joining us today. Is that to say that there are men, because I'm, I'm outnumbered here, guys. <laughs> I'm outnumbered. Is that to say that men don't care about children? Of course not. Okay. I'm just... Because they're not saying. here doesn't mean that they don't care for children. I'm just children. saying. I'm just... <laughs> just want to... I'm just saying. Don't... Please don't mind him. Okay. <laughs> so... Let me start with the lawyer. Hmm. We have domesticated this and that and this and that. And I think the last one was the Child Rights Act. Where has that gotten us? Um, thank you very much. Uh, the, the most ratified law in the world is the um, Convention on the Rights of Children. Um, we have the one for Africa. You know, the African Total on the Rights of Children, and many more laws, as you have said, including the Child's Right Act. In fact, Lagos State has the Child's Right Law of Lagos State. The Child's Right Act, in fact, is domesticated in about 25 states in Nigeria, as we speak, and only a few states, like 11 of them, especially in the north, um, is yet to ratify the Child's Right Act, because for it to work in a state, it has to be ratified, first of all. Um, but what we have realized is that there's definitely a gap. And the gap is in, in two things, but also for that. Number one is enlightenment. Because you know, in our organization, we believe that enlightenment is superior to enforcement. Because um, people cannot do beyond what they know, first of all. So we have these laws that, on one end, people both caregivers, parents, secondary parents, primary parents, are not aware of, or they're aware of it, and it's conflicting with their belief system. Because the law says, oh, a child should not be you know, should be protected from sexual abuse, physical abuse, you know, their rights are there in the laws. But, you know, um, sometimes belief system of parents, both primary and secondary, you know, conflicts with the law. And we give people laws that they do not believe in, so they do not run it. That's the first thing. They do not know, for those who know, they do not believe that this should be, the way children should be raised. Meanwhile, the law says everything should be done in the best interest of the child. Now, the other leg of this is enforcement. 
when a law has been made, for example, in Lagos State in 2016, there was a policy that was set up that um, everybody in Lagos State, anywhere children are gathered, there should be a child protection policy, for example. That was a policy that became an executive order in 2016. That particular policy, you know, has almost no budget for enforcement because, okay, you have said people should do this thing. The law says that. Uh, what is budget for people going around to check are these policies in place? For places where the policy exists, are they being run? Mm -hmm. Even for government owned institutions, mm -hmm. I mean private school, public schools, public institutions where children gathered, this policy is being run. So the two legs are first, enlightenment, belief system of people. Thirdly, we have the issue of enforcement. Until these laws, uh, not just enforced, seem to be enforced because, not just because we want to make laws, because we want to see that children are being protected and their rights are enforced, then we begin to have a conversation. So those are the issues. <sighs> okay. That's an argument on one side <laughs> of the divide, you know. But she's spoken to the government part of it. Um, and I know that you would want to speak to that. Uh, first of all, maybe we we'll begin from there, you know, with you. Is that too good? Because uh, there are those who are wondering if the child, the, if the law for children in Lagos, the Child Rights Act domesticated in Lagos, um, is as strong as it is supposed to be, then I don't think you know such issues as she's raised would happen. And then uh, there are many who would remember who would reference that conversation around, you know, some children on boats in Lagos, in, you know, uh, ramshackled uh, facilities in Lagos for education and all of those things. I know that government is doing its best mm. to make sure that those things do not exist Makoko. in Makoko, mm. but they are there. So we want to begin by at least speaking to the side of this child protection council that you belong to, what does it do? What does the council do? And how does it help to solve the problems that she's raised? Okay. Yes, thank you. What we do in Child Protection Network is to help those children get to this place of having their best interest. Because like the law says, everything should be done in the best interest of the child. But what we must know is that we have the population in Nigeria is so much, like take for granted Ali Mosho, where I am the PRO. Ali Mosho is one of the largest local governments in Lagos State. And despite the fact that we're doing a lot as Child Protection Network, it seems like it's not enough. And one of the challenges we are having is that there's no support from anywhere. Most times, these things we do, we do, um, as NGOs, because Child Protection Network is a, is a combination of several NGOs coming together to speak for the betterment of the Nigerian child. So we do these things on our own. We do child rescue. We, we, there are situations whereby people report. We have offices, especially in Alimosho. So we have offices where people can report to or people can walk in physically, you know, to say that a child is being abused. Some people call in anonymous and say, okay, a child has been abused. And we do child rescue. We've rescued children from their parents, we've rescued children from schools, we've rescued children, and also other things we're doing is that we're going to schools to train them, to train the teachers. She mentioned that some of these policies are in place, but the people are not even enlightened about this policy. And um, my boss in Child Protection Network, Ali Mosho, will always say, if you don't train them, you cannot blame them. So one thing we do is we go to schools and we train the teachers, we train the guidance and counseling person in the school to know how to bring about this um, best interest of the child into play as it has to do with these laws. So when we train these people, we enlighten them. We'll also go to the CDAs, local governments, to train these people so that when they get to know that this is what they should do and this is how a child should be handled, things will begin to get better. But it's still in the process. It's, it's a gradual thing. It will take a lot for it to happen because a lot of people do not even believe in these laws. For example, there was a time we went to the market to try to train market women and we were having questions like, are you trying to dictate to us how we're going to bring up our, bring children. Up our children? Which is the imagine. question that I wanted to ask you. <laughs> because, I mean, um, some of these parents, guardians, grew up with certain value systems. Mm -hmm. 
how strong are those value systems in the first place? Mm. So uh, it raises a question she talked about, enlightenment. Yes. You can't enlighten anyone how to raise a kid when they were raised in a particular way. They're just following a template. Yes. Now, there, there is a, we talked about all these treaties, resolutions, conventions, and all of that that various countries sign up to. Mm -hmm. But the understanding of those treaties and mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. don't percolate to the people. So we still in the space of uh, handling children the way we were handled. A good number of people still do that. So if that's the value system they grew up with mm. and no one is sharing any newer values with them how in the universe are they going to know different but, but some growing up i remember when certain things were changing in lagos the the market women would come go back home and you would hear them saying things like ijoba sokwe the government says we yes. should do it this way we should do it that way and the, the government has also explained to us that we should do it this way because it's going to be of this benefit and that benefit. What happened to all that kind of system? Yes, the, what happened to this kind of system is that these parents that we're talking to about child protection, uh, this is what the government has said, this is how children should be handled now. If you don't handle your children right, the government will come and take over your child. They don't go back to those systems of ijoba so we pay, you understand mm. the government says this the government because they feel that the present presently they feel the government has failed them so people feel in ah. their minds that oh other things you have not addressed you things address that concern us you want upbringing. to address my child's upbringing you want to dictate what happened in my home when you are supposed to give us better leadership you're supposed to the, the economic water, situation is terrible and one thing we must know is that the reason why parents seem to pay deaf ears to this thing was saying about child protection is because the first because of the frustration that is coming from other aspects of their lives some people are living in abject poverty terrible they don't know where the next meal is going to come from they even look at the children and they know that these kids are going to go to bed with hungry stomach you Mr. understand Mr. Kudo, the, mm. the children who come from poor homes are not the ones who do drugs because drugs are extremely ex expensive, so I heard, <laughs> except for the ones that we buy OTC. But, you know, let me come to... I'm not, not that those issues you're raising are not important, yes. but you know, I'm just saying perhaps um, uh, it's not econo for economic reasons. Maybe mm. there are some other considerations. Uh, this enlightenment thing that you talked about, yes. it's not for the poor parents because there are those parents who know these things who do not pay as much attention as they would need they, sh they, they need they to pay to yeah. those ch children thank you they that as they should pay to the kids so if they do not pay enough attention how in the universe are they going to give attention to any laws or treaties hmm. well I, I would say that um the issues are motivated, really. Um, it still comes back to um, means of livelihood. The thing is that in Nigeria, an average parent is a local government chairman. And what do I mean by that? He runs his home, he provides education for his child. So that rich man wants to give his child the best education because ordinarily the child won't get it in the country. That man provides electricity, provides everything. So most of the times, these rich people as well are overwhelmed with making more money. Our children are neglected. There are four forms of abuse that a child can face. Mm -hmm. One is physical, one is sexual, one is emotional. Neglect is one of the most rampant and not talked about form of abuse that, we, that children face now. Neglect. Children are being neglected, actually. Because, you see, um, there was a study that was done in a particular country, I think it was Singapore, where children were misbehaving. A lot of crime, the crime rate was very high. And the government said, see parents who would pay you. Stay with your children for two hours more every day. And within a couple of years, we saw that crime rates reduced in that country. See, children that we do not have relationship with, I mean, give them rules and regulations. It's really a rebellion. So these issues are still, you know, interrelated. Even though they are rich people, yes. Mm -hmm. But where's the time? They are jumping from one country to another. I remember walking to the school where they had to call parents, come and pick your children from school. We're consulting for the school. Come pick your children. It's holiday time. It was a boarding school. Parents that were not in the country can't come. We had to involve government agencies to ensure 
ensure ensure that they can pick the children from schools. Mm. So even the rich, you know, the children are suffering from big time neglect. And let me also go to the fact that see, society is society. Children are not parented by their parents alone. They are forms of of protection. There's a community. There's a the government. Uh, we, have, we also have the the parents and we have the the immediate community. So children now are parented by not just their biological parents, but by the community. Their parents but that's are social. Not that. Yes, by social media, <laughs> children are parented. Yeah. Children now, so parents are conflicting. That we have, you, you are competing with the phones. You are competing with social media. So see, a parent now has to be extra, extra vigilant and present. So the rich sometimes, most times, in fact, they are not present. So these children are being parented by other things and other people mm. in the community. Housemaid, Housemaids, nanny. nannies, mm. phones and likes. So people say children of nowadays, children of nowadays. And I'm like, no, God didn't wait for this time to bring all the bad children in the world, no. <laughs> the, what happened is that parents of nowadays are raising children of nowadays. Mm. What um, they know. Let me ask you this, because uh, when we had this conversation on Children's Day yesterday, we, uh, you, you probably saw us talking to children, you know, two children actually, uh, one of them an, an adolescent, and the, one of the questions that we asked was, and maybe I should bring this to you, do parents listen to children? These days. Whether it's uh, rich, not so rich, and all of that, do parents listen to children how should parents listen to children how important or maybe let me make it a little lighter how necessary is it for parents to not just hear the voices of their children asking for biscuits and all but to actually listen to the children how important how essential is it Yes, thank you so much. It is very, very essential. In fact, the essentiality of this cannot be overemphasized. Coming from where you stopped with me the other time, that um, rich parents as their children that are doing drugs and all of that. That's where it starts. No, from. I didn't say that. No, no I said, that most, <laughs> mostly. I said, poor people don't do don't drugs. Don't do drugs. Period. Don't, yes. don't, I, we can, <laughs> okay, I have a lawyer. Okay. Don't, 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 don't refrain. I'm also a lawyer. lawyer. I'm also a lawyer. <laughs> All that's, right. That's yes. <laughs> so, okay, yes. So now, flowing from that, you understand, a child might, you know, it might be the early stage of being introduced to drugs. And the child is trying to pass a message to the parents. Yes. And that parent is not listening. listening. Before you know what is happening, that child goes very deep into the act of using drugs. And at a particular time, it becomes difficult to bring the child out of it. I was also going to address that aspect of um, child abuse, which is neglect. Most times, you're, the child is trying to talk to the parent. The parent is either not listening, yeah. the parent is either not no, there, no. and they feel that the school will do all the job yes they feel that the teacher should listen didn't you talk to your teacher in school didn't you what do you want to talk to me about now no time for the child in the name of looking for money the, the times are hard everywhere things are difficult we need to have more money we need to even be sure of your tomorrow because they have money for today they want to gather for tomorrow and gather for next year and gather for the next generation not Having in mind that your child is the only living legacy you're going to have. Mm -hmm. You can have houses, you can have cars, you can have everything you want. But once you pass away, your child is your only living legacy. And that is why parents should begin to learn, to listen to their children, pay attention to details. There are communication, there are non-verbal communications that the children are given, they, they are given to us. You know, when I was having my court attachment, the judge on one particular case was very angry with the mother when she was in the witness box because she said it was a matter of child abuse. And the mother said that the child had been abused 10 times before she realized that this child is being abused. And the judge became so emotional. You know, it was no longer official. At a point, he was even saying, Madam, God, we punish 
punish you because it just it just feels like if you have a little girl of five years old being abused, if that child has been sexually abused, a mother that pays attention when the child is walking from a distance to you, if it is happening for the first time, yeah. you will understand that there is some kind of pain in this girl because as she's or walking. Or some discomfort. She's got some discomfort. You will, you will understand. But that's to show you how nonchalant that mother was. Mm -hmm. And to mm -hmm. think that it is a staff of hers that has been abusing her own child under her nose and for the tenth time before she could understand what was going on. They must, they mo we must understand that relationship with your child is key. If there's no relationship with the child, the child might be talking and you will not hear. Mm -hmm. And the child might want to talk and decide not to even talk because at the end of the day, what will she get or what will he get in return? Some children complain to their yeah, parents, this is happening. They scold them. They say it is your fault. You are the one who put yourself there. And then most children are not even able to say no to child abuse outside because of lack of self-esteem. Yeah, confidence. They don't have confidence in themselves. Their parents have already talked them down. Their parents wake them up every morning telling them how stupid they are, how good for nothing they are, and all of that. So really, my heart is for parents to know that your child is the best gift you can get in this world and, and to I, instill in them self-esteem. And our, our heart is for the children today. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> madam, yes. Um, so we've spoken about the children oh. speaking, or rather yes. parents listening, parents listening to, the children. to the children. How do children speak? For us, okay. <laughs> and I'm not talking about those ones. Those ones have, uh, they have come out teeth finish. Even the young ones should learn to sort of, okay? Exactly. Okay, well, that's what I said. Uh. We're on the same page. Management <laughs> is proud of you. <laughs> How do children speak in a way that they would be Her recognized? Thank you. Recognize that they are speaking, recognize what they are saying, and recognize how to be heard. Hmm. How? Yeah. Okay, so I, I will start by saying that um, children are always speaking, actually. Children are always, always speaking. And, you know, children, somebody said that you don't, children don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. right? So people ask me, oh, why do children talk to you? Why do children talk to you? The, the question is, the answer is very simple. Children are persons. Sometimes we call them minor, which is not even right. Because really they are human beings. They are persons complete, made by God. So they are persons because they have sense of they have sense of worth, they can think and they have power of choice. Really. So children see that this person or these people, they want to hear me. There's an enabling environment for them to speak. So how do children speak? Basically, they speak from when they are young, for start by crying. Children speak and, you know, they, 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 they protest, you put them down, they protest, they want that warmth, mm -hmm. they call for attention, as far as when they are little. As they grow up, they come and say, oh, mommy, why is this happening? Why is it that, you know, flowers grow? Why is it that they bring me like 10 questions in a day, I'm tired? Come on, go and sit down. Especially when they don't have the answers. Yes, when they don't have the answers. Yes, yes, yes. Or they ask about mommy, how much how are babies made? The, <laughs> the stock. They are stuck. They don't want to say. So when the child asks the first questions, ask why, 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 and there's no answer. The child, you begin to you know, kill that curiosity in a child. How was the airplane made? Children saw that birds were flying, and they said, oh, if birds can fly, how come human beings can't fly? We'll see that human beings can fly as well. Those, those, those were the right brothers. And they sat down and made the airplane stereotype, the prototype that we used today curiosity in the minds of children is always working so when you shut down curiosity then they don't speak anymore and if I was talking to children I always tell them see ch a child speak until something happens because truly children are they are stifled they are stifled a child talks to you say oh don't talk back at me I'm an adult don't just don't look me in the eye culture right children are stifled so I tell them see don't speak until something happens so a child has been abused and Apart from that parents are not available, they tell mommy, somebody touched me, you know, in a particular way. And we say that, oh, that's, that's, your, that's your uncle, my baby, J.R. Ah, was supposed somebody touched you, what do you mean? That we will keep that. The child is like, okay, nobody believes me. Well, I tell children, see, keep speaking. Your mommy doesn't believe you talk to your pastor. They don't hear you talk to your teacher in school. Talk, they don't hear you talk to somebody that you can trust until something happens, keep speaking. But unfortunately, sometimes they are always speaking. Yes. 
and they don't get desired don't response, get desired response. Yeah. and then they have to talk to someone else. Yes, yes. and then, they, they, then sometimes they don't get the, the, wrong, Their friends. the yes. wrong responses. So, so what I would say is <laughs> that, see, until we actually look at children as a property of government, see, parents do not own children. You have to realize that. So the people that can do this work is the government in the sense that in, in, in developed climes, a parent is not doing the child well. What do they do? They take the child and give them better care. Mm. Don't forget that we have so much Social debt services. in Nigeria yeah. now that we, we don't Social, even know. Well, I'm, I'm coming, no, I, I, I will come back there. You know, Alera, I'm, I'm seeing a series. I just finished watching uh, a, a series, a short limited series number six episodes titled Clark and uh, he's it's from this guy that the Stockholm syndrome came mm. uh, but there's something in instrumental mm. about this guy he grew up to be completely asentimental unemotive mm. what happened he had an extremely bad hand dealt him by his dad mm. Mm. from when he was something in the region of five to get a smile from the dad a smile, not a commendation, just a smile from the dad. He looked forward to it. He, he hardly ever got it. Mm -hmm. And if he got a smile from the dad, almost as soon, he'll get a spank uh, <laughs> behind on his head. <laughs> now, uh, you, you, uh, we, we're talking about a better, a better ch future, future for the Nigerian child. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to go to the politics and all of those things that are sure. happening today. Mm -hmm. But the clear and present danger we are creating for these children by not giving them the simplest thing, which is the warmth. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Attention. How, how, how important is this? Do you think parents even understand that it is as important as that because there are those who think that giving them warmth, welcoming them helps build their self-esteem. Do you think parents and guardians, even teachers, have that un the understanding of how important that warmth is for children? Yes, I would say that some of the parents, teachers, caregivers, some of them have that importance, but they do not have enough. They don't know how important enough that is. And some some feel that they are giving attention to their children because they buy them gifts. Some, some interpret attention and wants in the name of gifts. I pay your school fees. Mm. What else do you want? So they don't understand the place of being there or the way I would put it, the place of being intentional with your child. You have a goal to achieve with your child. And, and like you said, I'm not interested in going to the politics, the government, and all of that, because at the end of the day, it is your child. Mm. If you like, blame the government. If you like, blame society. If you like, blame community. If you like, blame the school that you pay millions for. At the end of the day, it is your child. child. Okay. It is you as a parent that should sit down and say, this is what I want out of my child, and you sacrifice the time. They, so they, let, let, me, let me draw, you know, bring this home even closer. Alero, you will be able to re relate with this because you're a grandma. But they, there was a day, I think my, my 22-year-old was 15 at the time. We were having a conversation. <laughs> I just said, Daddy, if you know what I'm going through. <laughs> well, you true. What are you going to do? You have house rent to pay, you have school fees to pay, you have a car to fix. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it sounded funny to me at the it sounded ridiculous to me at the time. Mm. Until I spoke to a psychologist mm. who said, indeed, she was going through a lot. I spoke with a, we had an interview with a psychologist who said, and we, we'll probably close on this, who said, when asked the question of at what age do children have, is it depression? Mm. Said, I think they had, it said, was it 11 or 12 that he says, what's the child thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Their problems are, it may not be important to you, but it's important, it's important to, them. to them, yeah. It's important That's to right. them. Our parents are aware of that. Mm. It's the question that I want to ask, and how, how, how do parents know when their children are having these kinds of psychological pressures that hmm. they need to give attention to? Mm. So I'll say that the way a child tells you that it can come to you and tell you he's hungry, 
and it feels that someone will listen. That's the same thing that applies for telling you about these deep issues. And before we go there, you know, I was talking to a child who told me, oh, I'm doing badly in school. What's the problem? The child says, people gossip about me in school. Mm. They gank up to me and just talk about me. And because of that, I can't concentrate. That child was 10 years old. That child was going through that psychological issue in school. I huh. could not talk to his parents. I said, why didn't you talk to your parents? If I tell mommy, she won't believe me. So from mm. the age of three, a child already begins to feel self-conscious and all those things. In fact, the child is a person. So every emotion that an adult feels, sadness, joy, happiness, anger, every emotion that an adult feels, a child also feels. So how can parents identify these things is the answer is simple. And what I've been saying since is have a relationship. A child will tell you, I'm going through this in school. And how do you respond? Oh, okay, that's fine. Come tell me more. You don't judge. You don't interrogate them. Ask questions. You don't judge. You don't say, oh, that's how you do. That's who you are. Do you understand? So you ask those questions. And even before they tell you, a child goes to come back and say, oh, I was school. They say, fine. Because the question you have asked, the answer is fine, generally. But when you <laughs> ask more questions and say, how was school today? Did anyone bully you? What act of kindness did you try to do today? What did you do? Who spoke to you? Who, did you who touched you? What happened? You ask specific questions to get specific answers. Since, are you going through any issues? Since, since you are talking about question. this, I think we need a long list of questions that parents should <laughs> Yes. 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 Long list of questions. Well, she has told us that children are human beings. Yes. And they feel everything, everything. that we feel, we feel as adults. Yeah, persons. Yes. So we definitely need to pay attention. So yes. we're talking about giving a, I mean, a better future for the Nigerian child. So would you therefore say that giving that child a better future begins with the parents? Yes. It begins with the parents because a lot of children learn everything or basically most of the things they know from home and the parents are better teachers one thing we did not really touch here today is um, the sexual abuse that children are going through most times it's tax even from the home not from the school not from her outside people have cousins come to spend all the days with them. Uh -huh. And before you know what is happening, if you are a parent that is not paying attention, the cousin of the child can be the one that start abusing the child sexually in your house. So a lot is happening within the family system and most parents are not paying attention to it. So for me, I would say that we begin to have a better future for the Nigerian child when the parents are conscious of the fact that no matter what happens, no matter whom I have to blame, on the long run, this is my child. My and child. then we now look at good education for the children and all of that. But I would say it begins from the home. And that is where we have to anchor this for today. Um, Joy Etukudo, PRO, Lagos Child Protection Council, Ali Mosho. And we also had Olabisia for Labi, legal practitioner and advocate, SAFE, Safe for Children's Society. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. And once again, happy Children's Day. <laughs> to me. Whatever that means. Oh, well, you're somebody's <laughs> child, so that's fine. Okay, Sunrise will be right back with the home stretch in just a moment. Stay with us.